by Meredith McKnight. Good luck for Cunningham. It's been quite knocked down. Hayden goes to the corner. Sarah Gosling tries a three-pointer and knocks it down. Holly Eyes three-pointer. Timeout, Dallas Center drives. Welcome to the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network Podcast. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy New Year, and welcome to episode number 33 of the Tiger Sports Livestream Network podcast. We got a really special episode today. We're going to have results from just one day of action last week. Grinnell went to CPU. We'll tell you how that turned out. Uh, we also will tell you about the upcoming events this weekend, and then we've all led up 2019 into 2020. We are going to be counting down the top five moments voted by you, the fans, that happened on the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network all of 2019. We have a really exciting episode upcoming to start the new year, to start the new decade. Let's get to it on episode 33. Hey there, I'm Joey Polyi, third generation owner of Polyi's and Grinnell. Since 1957, we've been serving you the flavors you savor. Dine in, carry out, or pick up our frozen pizzas for a night in. Our promise to you? Everything is made from scratch, and we only use the freshest ingredients, guaranteed. Plus, get your kids signed up for our Pax Pals program to get free pizza and shirts. Visit polyeyesgrinnellia.com or ask your server how to sign up. See you soon at Polly Eyes Pizza Grinnell on 5th Ave between Main and Broad Street. Tomorrow, some fear the uncertainty it brings. Some trust the promise it holds. At Grinnell Mutual, we are always looking forward to tomorrow. Growing and innovating... So even if the plans you have for the future aren't the same as the plans that the future holds for you, you can be ready. Because we'll be ready, like we have been for over 100 years. Trust in that. Trust in tomorrow. Talk to a Grinnell Mutual agent today. Alrighty, welcome back. Thank you once again to all of the sponsors that sponsored the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network. We really appreciate it all season long. And we look forward to the rest of the basketball season that those sponsors are hopping on board. And then, don't look now, softball and baseball season are catching up pretty quickly as well. So we'll talk about results. Last Saturday, the Grinnell boys and girls went to uh, Center Point Urbana, long drive up on that Saturday. I was not able to attend, but I know a lot of fans made their way up to CPU to watch. Uh, on the girls' side, it was a tough loss, 52-46 to against CPU. So two years in a row, Center Point Urbana catches the heels of this Grinnell basketball team, and there's no shame in it. Center Point Urbana's girls' basketball team is absolutely incredible. I mean, they, they make runs to the state tournament almost every single year. They're former champions, uh, and to only lose by six, it shows a testament of this girls' basketball team that I think a lot of people really need to get in the mood that the Little Hawkeye Conference is not as competitive as it's been in the past couple of years, that once Grinnell hits... LHC play we could see a lot a lot of wins and just games like this really help prepare this girls basketball team they'll have another game like this on the 13th I believe we'll look ahead in the upcoming events North Polk comes to town and North Polk is always always a hard matchup on the girls side so I mean despite a loss uh, Ivy Schmidt I believe led with 15 points Uh, but overall Grinnell falls short against CPU on the girls side by six points, but only losing by six to center point Urbana, that's that's not that bad and nothing to be too ashamed of. They get to rebound here when I get to the upcoming events. On the boys' side, uh, probably best that I didn't go to the game because I probably would have also been very mad. Uh, the boys lost to center point Urbana 68-55 to uh, based off of the huddle stuff I've seen and what you know a lot of people have told me how the game went. Uh, Let's just say it was a five on eight in terms of the people on the floor. Uh, Grinnell did not get the upper hand on any of the calls really all night long, and uh, which led to some people getting tossed from the game and just a lot of other stuff that just really, really didn't go well in Grinnell's favor. And uh, none of it should have happened. The referees, uh, in my opinion, based off what I've seen, really did not call a fair game. I have been told that they have, at least one of them has apologized to the school, uh, but, you know, in that case, does it really matter? Uh, definitely not how the boys wanted to go out uh, to start the new year, but, uh, you know, CPU is a tough team. Coming in, both teams were 4-3. and three. Uh, Something was going to give way, and Grinnell hung around for quite a bit of the game, but in the end, when calls came and push came to shove, uh, Grinnell just wasn't on the good side of those calls. And CPU was able to pull away late for a 13-point victory. 
So that's all that happened last week. Uh, we've all been on break, or at least the high school has been on break. So uh, not much happened. Basketball was able to sneak one in and, uh, you know, sadly went over to CPU and got two losses. But uh, it's games like those against those type of opponents that really help show you what kind of team you have and the fight they have. And it's also just a great learning experience going forward. And I think Grinnell will learn heavily from this. Uh, now, I don't know if we'll play the CPU again next year, and this time they're back at home. Uh, I kind of like playing CPU. Uh, obviously, the boys aren't going to play want to play CPU anymore, which is completely understandable. But uh, I just think it's a nice it's a nice opponent. Now, in my opinion, why can't we do what we did a couple years ago and play in Cedar Rapids or something? Like It's kind of a far ways away, in my opinion, for schools to go back and forth. Now, granted, it's on a Saturday, but I just know from hearing from fans that were at the game on Saturday all day... I mean, it was a pretty long day of basketball. JV, uh, there were t- JV games, I might have been freshman games, and then the varsity games. It was a really long day for Grinnell fans that went and watched the whole day of basketball. Alrighty, so now it is time to get into a, a little fun segment that we wanted to get together. You know, 2019 was such a big year, not only for us at the Tiger Sports Livestream Network, but also at Grinnell High School. I mean, a lot of good things uh, happened in sports. And uh, we were so glad to cover a few of them. I want to take a moment. So we we put a poll out of our top of what we gathered were some of the top moments that we captured on our live stream. And uh, we wanted to pull those together and see what did the fans think were the top five favorite moments of the season. What were the best moments of 2019? And we wanted to compile them together. We put out a poll on our social media. We had the clips right there so you could watch them. And people voted. We had 73 people vote in total, which is really cool. Uh, Thank you to everyone that voted. And uh, we have the results. I wanted to talk about just briefly the the stuff that we didn't capture on camera or or things that we did capture but we just didn't quite put into the poll. Um, Some things that we just can't (laughs) capture because we don't video it. Uh, Macy and Riley, Macy Harris and Riley Osborne in tennis in the spring they won the Little Hawkeye Conference doubles tournament uh, to end the season. So that was really cool. Obviously, we don't video tennis, but that was a cool achievement. Uh, Brock Beck and Cam Stevenson making it to state wrestling. That was really cool. Uh, I assume they're going to be right back there this season. Two incredible athletes, as long along with a lot of other athletes in that wrestling team. I think Grinnell's going to have quite a few entries into the state wrestling tournament this year. Uh, the soccer team made it to the playoffs uh, this past season. What an incredible run, winning the Little Hawkeye Conference. Big wins over Dallas Center Grimes, North or uh, Norwalk. Uh, I was really happy I was able to witness that. I got into soccer a little bit more, went and took pictures of them, followed the team to Norwalk. Uh, it was a really fun season. Sadly fell short in the playoffs, but what a big deal that was for that team uh, to go that far. Uh, that, that was so cool to watch. That was that was so cool to watch seeing the soccer team do that. And, uh, you know, we didn't do volleyball this year, but volleyball is progressively, I feel, getting better as the season or as the years go by. And I think uh, they're building a pretty solid volleyball team there. I, I think we're going to have pretty good results in the next couple of years. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot that happens off camera that we don't catch. Uh, Cross country being another thing for both boys and girls. Uh, you know, we don't catch everything on camera, and I just wanted to give a shout out to those big things that happened off camera that are still happening and uh, and are making big impacts across Grinnell High School. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to say what, uh, give a little detail on what our top five was, and then we'll take a, or I'll, I'll leave a gap so that way we can insert the clip, and you guys can not see, but you can hear what happened, and uh, hopefully it does justice about what's happened in those big moments. So we'll start with number five. Number five actually was a tie, and it is at coming in at number five in the tie was Dodge Souser, uh, his big sack against Newton quarterback Kyle Long. This was one of the bigger hits, if not the biggest hit of the uh, 2019 Grinnell High School football season. Uh, there was about a minute 15 remaining in the game. Newton's just trying to, you know, get this game over with. It's 35 14, they're ready to go home. The student section's already moved over to the end zone to get ready to wait for him. Everyone's like, all right, we're just going to take it easy. And Kyle Long fakes a handoff to Dylan Farber. And Farber misses his block, a.k.a. Dodge Souser. And Dodge completely blindsides Kyle Long, puts him into the turf. If you watch it on video, it's absolutely incredible. It's a crazy hit. And uh, it was a great way to end 
that game versus Newton, a historic game, which also, spoiler, has another spot up ahead in the top five. But take a listen to Dodge Souser's big hit against Newton's Kyle Long. Long fake to Farber. Here oh, comes there Dodge Souser. Oh, oh, my goodness. All righty, moving on to the second spot in the tie for number five, Grinnell Boys Baseball upsets 10th-ranked Ballard. This happened on July 16th. You know, coming near the end of the season, the Grinnell Boys Baseball team, uh, you know, was kind of slipping just a little bit. You could tell the play was just, it was there, but they were slipping just a little bit. Some tough losses uh, earlier, and Ballard comes to town. It's not a doubleheader. It's just a single game. 10th-ranked Ballard, obviously poised to make a run in the playoffs, and they come to Grinnell, and Grinnell blanks them. Four to nothing, a big win over Ballard. Uh, like I said, 10th ranked in the 3A, or in whatever conference Grinnell was in. I believe 3A, yeah. Uh, great win for Grinnell. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a hot, muggy night, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, one of those nights that you just kind of remember. A mid-July night, and Grinnell got a big win over a really good Ballard baseball team. And uh, those votes came in for the top five. They just snuck their way and listened to the final moments of that big game. Colin Gibson up to bat now for Grinnell. He got a man with wheels up there on second. Let's see if he can do it. Woo, just outside, four ball one. Outside. That one popped high, deep. And is it going to be gone? Is it going? It's gone. No, it's not. Oh, it's I can't see because of the rain, but it went all the way back to the wall. Parker Johnson's going to race home. Safe at third. What a play by Colin Gibson. So a runner on first. Let's see if Allbaugh can maybe bring him home. Swung on, grounded up the middle. That's going to be fair. Parker Johnson's going to come racing home. The throw home is not in time. And Grinnell takes the 3-0 lead over Ballard. It's an RBI single for Blake Allbaugh. Alex Smith is the one up to bat here for Grinnell. 2-1. Alex gives that thing a ride to left field. It's going back, going back, going back. It is off the wall. <laughs> what a hit by Alex Smith, and he gets on second for a double. Nick Williams up to bat now for Grinnell the season. Nick grounds that one down. Gavin turns on the Jets, gets on to third, run on to first. Is he going to be safe? Oh, but it's close, but he's out at... Andrew Kaufman's up to bat. The pitcher, he had a single earlier. The 0-1 to Kaufman. Down in the dirt, that's going to be way too far for the catcher to make a play. Gavin McFarland races home, and Grinnell takes the 4-0 lead. Popped high. This should be routine. It's going back. Parker Johnson runs up and makes the grab in stride. Everybody takes that big sigh of relief. We are two outs away. One out, top to seven. Ballard needs four to head to extras if possible. Full count. 3-2 pitch by Kaufman. Got him. Strike three. Two outs. One away for Grinnell. Strike two. Just caught the edge, but it's inside enough. And here we go. Full count. Baller got a hit last time. Swung on and missed, and in a muggy July night at Fowler Field, the 10th ranked team in 3A has fallen. Grinnell defeats Ballard 4 to nothing. Grinnell moves to 24 and a, a, or 24 or 23 and 10 on the season. Ballard falls to 24 and 7. They will play Perry Friday night in the first round of the playoffs. Grinnell comes back here tomorrow against Indianola in what should be a fantastic game. So what an awesome game that was. Moving on to the number four spot, one of my personal favorites, uh, number four, Megan Doty's buzzer beater versus Gilbert. You know, Grinnell scheduled Gilbert because Gilbert's a really tough team every single year. Last season, they finished 16-6. and six. Their, One of those six losses was against Grinnell. Grinnell was behind for most of the game. It was kind of back and forth, and then late in the game, Grinnell made a late charge. They took the lead. Gilbert went back down court and scored again. And then it was 70-69. to 69. Grinnell only needed two points, but they didn't want two points. Macy found Megan Doty in the corner, and the rest is history. Take a listen. Second one's good. Grinnell has their first lead in a while. Gilbert gets going down court. They got numbers. 24 seconds left. They move the ball around the top of the key. Grinnell, are they going to wait this thing out? They might. They swing it around. Two-pointer is good 70 69 eight seconds left macy 
Cutting, kicks in the corner. Megan for three. Good! And that'll do it! Good old wins! Megan Doty at the buzzer! Absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh! What a moment that was. You know, I don't remember a ton of Gurnell buzzer beaters in general, but true buzzer beaters. And uh, for that big moment for Megan Doty, uh, the fans loved it. Uh, they didn't rush the court, but man, that, the excitement in that arena was so electric. And what a game it was to get a big win over a Gilbert squad who Grinnell had beat for their first trip to the uh, state tournament a couple years back. Um, so Grinnell and Gilbert run deep, and I think every time those two teams play, it is so fun to watch. Moving on to the number three spot is Jaden Gibson. He breaks the all-time GHS strikeout record with 298 against Norwalk. He finished with 300 and won that game. What a career for Jaden. Uh, you know, he said in his interview late in, or after the game, he said, you know, he really wasn't even a pitcher. He's just kind of the pitcher to be in that position just to get more reps and become a better baseball player. He's truly a catcher. But for him to go out and break that all-time record uh, with over 301, it was quite a special moment. And Grinnell walked out with a win against Norwalk. So here's a quick listen on the record-breaking moment that Jaden Gibson broke the GHS all-time strikeout record. Pitch hitter. KLX will be the one going against Jaden here at the bottom or the top of the fifth. Two outs. Down for strike one. We're just. Oh, one. Fouled. Oh, two. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Up top for ball one. Nobody on, two outs. Now it's 3-0 over Norwalk. The 1-2. Got him. And there it is. History is made. 298 strikeouts. And Grinnell is now looking at the all-time leading strikeout pitcher in Grinnell High School history. 298 strikeouts. So what an accomplishment by Jaden Gibson. He passes Eli Dunn, who set his record just a few years ago. And for two times in this 10-year span, Grinnell has been blessed with two really good pitchers. And Jaden Gibson now atop of the all-time pitching strikeout leader at 298. Congratulations to my friend, Jaden Gibson. Alrighty, we are back here for the post-game interview with Jaden Gibson and Coach Stenberg. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. Good win versus Norwalk. I'll start with Jaden. You are now the all-time leading strikeout leader here at Grinnell High School. You pass uh, Eli Dunn. What does that mean for you? 301 now, 70 this season. What's that mean for you? Um, personally, it means a lot because I know over the years I've come a long way, and pitching isn't you know my primary position or anything like that. But personally, it means a lot, and to see you know. The defense behind me can make a lot of great plays. Brock had a good play in center, and Nick had a good play at second. And then pretty much all night, the defense played great behind me. So, I mean, as a team, it feels great, and personally, it feels great. You've struggled a little bit the past few weeks. And what what helped you kind of get over this little bump and come back tonight and throw the game that you did? Um, I think against DCG, I was just too predictable. Um, they, I felt like they knew what was coming all night, and obviously when someone knows what's coming, it it's going to be bad for you. But we mixed pitches well tonight, and my arm was healthy. My arm hasn't really felt that healthy lately, but tonight it felt great, and it's good to come out with a win. Coach, last Wednesday hurt, and I, I think I'll, the whole team, and I mean, I for sure, I, and I bet a lot of the fans uh, felt that, you know, that was just one that got away. 
Uh, how did you rally the troops and come back tonight and take down a, a conference foe that is quite pesky? You know, I, t I told them, you know, we really played well for six and a half innings. Um, and the only thing I was disappointed was is we had one unfortunate play go against us, and it felt like at that point, you know, we kind of just were melting mentally. Um, and so being able to overcome that is the only thing. Otherwise, that was still a step forward. You know, obviously we want to win and, and those – you know, not not have that finish, but um, in regards of you know our approach at the play, our hitting, our defense, our our pitching for the most part, you know that was a step forward, and that's the way we were looking at it. Um, and you know, I explained to them, you know, you play baseball long enough, you're going to be on the opposite side of that, and you're going to be for unfortunate on that side of that sometimes, and that's that's just part of baseball, and you got to overcome that, and we responded well tonight. We're on July 1st. We're not really getting down into crunch time, but we're kind of getting there. What's the mindset overall as we're coming to the end of the season, getting into district play? keep taking step, steps forward you know that's really our goal from here on out is you know play our best baseball in July is our, has been our goal all year long um, and especially now now that we're here you know we just keep taking steps forward you know whether that means winning all our games or, or dropping here and there but we just kind of make sure we're stay focused and, and play our best baseball and when we do that good things happen have a lot of fun it seems like we bring a little bit of good luck while we're up here so uh, we really appreciate you two coming up and congratulations on the win congratulations on the record thank you yeah thanks Blake Got him. And there it is. History is made. 298 strikeouts. And Grinnell is now looking at the all-time leading strikeout pitcher in Grinnell High School history. 200. What a moment that was. That was so fun to be a part of. Uh, you know, our first time doing baseball on the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network to witness a moment like that. Uh, you never know. Maybe maybe another person will break it in the, here in the near future. But in my opinion, that record's going to stand for quite a while. Moving on to the number two position, another one of my favorites. I mean, what am I saying? All of these are my favorites. But coming in at number two, Wyatt Hunter breaks the school rushing record with 321 yards and five touchdowns against the Newton Cardinals. You know, coming into the game, Wyatt was poised to do something great. Everybody was waiting against Mid Prairie Wellman, and he kind of did well. Uh, you know, everyone was waiting. When is he going to bust out and break the record? We knew it was close. Uh, he was waiting to break Jake Simon's record, which I believe was either 295 or 298, but Wyatt was waiting, and we were all waiting for it, and then finally, uh, a game that you know I think a lot of people thought was going to be pretty close, Grinnell just pounded Newton, and uh, they had no stance. Newton was the top rushing offense, one of the top rushing offenses in 3A coming into this game, and they made or Grinnell made them look silly. I mean, the, Grinnell was the best rushing team in the conference then at that point. Uh, 321 yards, five touchdowns. That that cannot go unsaid. A 35 to 14 win, and Wyatt Hunter broke the school rushing record. It was truly a historic night. Take a listen to the highlights of that ball game. Wyatt Hunter in the backfield now. Hunter comes in with an impressive 922 yards. They hand it to Hunter. He plows through the middle and drops down for a gain of about two or three. They pitch it to Hunter, and Wyatt busts through a hole, busts through another man, broke it off, and he finally goes down. It's a big first down. Oh, my goodness, he just laid the boom. He didn't even really want to juke him. They give it to him again, breaks another tackle, pushes through defenders, and he falls forward. Johnson moves in motion. They hand off to Hunter again, going middle. Hunter tripped up, ball came out. Did he hop on top of it? Hunter gets the call, breaks a few tackles, and drops down. Easy first down for Grinnell. First and five, Hunter to the right side. Can he get a few blocks? Bounces it, stays on his feet, spins forward. First down, Grinnell. Really, that's the key. Hunter trips and stays on his feet, and he finally hit the grass was the thing. Souser, handoff to Hunter. He's got it, has more. Why Hunter off to the races. They're not going to catch him. Touchdown, Grinnell. Handoff, Hunter pushes forward. Hang on to that football, and he fights forward all the way down for about a gain of eight. Salzer, low snap, handoff to Hunter. Hunter gets a lane. Here he goes, and spun down to the ground. It's a first down and more Grinnell. Handoff, Hunter. Here he goes. Gets a good block, busts through another, and he barely falls forward. Hunter gets the call. Hunter pushes through a hole, stays on his feet, and is dropped down to the ground for a gain of about one or two. McGriff in motion. Handoff, Wyatt Hunter gets a block, powers his way for a first down. I Handoff, Hunter tries to get to the hole. Can he punch it in? Again in motion. 
They hand off to Hunter, who pushes forward and stumbles into the end zone. Touchdown, Grinnell. Hand off to Hunter, and Hunter busts through a hole and drags to Souser. Hand off to Wyatt. And Wyatt will bust through and falls forward down. Here we go. Souser hand off to Wyatt Hunter. He is going to have the first down and more. Wyatt Hunter foot race. And he is going to be driven down to the ground. It's a first down and more. So you have the wind at your back. Souser, though, hand off to Wyatt Hunter again. Wyatt Hunter with the block. He is not going to be touched. Touchdown, Grinnell. They hand off to Hunter, and Hunter stays on his feet. Bust through a hole. Oh, my goodness. He's not going to be caught unless Newton can get there. They do not. Touchdown, Wyatt Hunter. Four TDs on the night. Hunter again gets a good lane. There he goes again. <laughs> He's not going to be caught. Wyatt Hunter again. Touchdown, Gurnell. Five touchdowns in the game. Wyatt Hunter had 335 yards rushing. We could now be looking at the owner of the single game rushing record. What a night that was. I, I just, I remember it keenly. I, Newton just, you could tell the whole sideline was shocked. Wyatt was breaking every single run he almost had. Uh, you know, at one point it felt like he was purposely running into defenders just so he could make them uh, an embarrassment. It was that bad uh, for the Newton defense. And uh, I feel like next year they're probably going to want a little bit of revenge, but I can tell you right now, Wyatt probably still haunts their dreams. That's just my opinion. Uh, but what a game that was, a 35-14 to victory over Newton. And then coming in at the number one spot, drum roll please... The number one spot, Jay Cole hitting a game-winning clutch shot to beat Benton. I know, this is so recent. I was pretty surprised this got number one, but in hindsight, this was a terrific shot. Grinnell versus Benton. Grinnell coming off a big win against Oskaloosa. You know, a lot of, you know, back and forth kind of play. You beat Oskaloosa on Friday night, then you come back home and you got to play Benton, who is also very good. You could tell Grinnell was tired. You could tell that they were fatigued from the night before. But when it came down to it, they gave the ball to the best player on the court. And Jay Cole made a terrific turnaround jumper. Reminded me of Kobe Bryant a little bit. And it was nothing but net to sink the hopes of Benton winning that basketball game. The crowd reaction was amazing. Uh, you know, we're not going to see many shots like that. And Jake completely nailed it. Take a listen to the number one spot of the top play of the 2019 GHS season. Wilkins at the wing, 14 seconds, 12 seconds. McGriff outside, Mateus to the wing, down low to Jay Cole. His pull-up jumper is good! Time out, Grinnell! Jay Cole to the lead for Grinnell. This is for the ball game. Benton's got a score to win it. Whatever you do, do not foul. Jay Cole and Owen all the way here on this left side. They guard closely. They get it in. Seven seconds. Sadler up court. In the corner. Caruzzi traveled. Jay Cole forces the bad play, and it's a huge mistake for Benton. What a game it's been. Grinnell's got to get it in, though. 1.5 seconds left. Boy, my voice is going away. You know, at this point, you're almost like chucking down court just to get it to touch somebody. <laughs> Which is what they did last night. Yep. Badowski just happened to foul. 49-48. Wilkins, cross court, Chuck. And here's the half court heave. No good. Grinnell survives. 49-48. They win over Benton. And they move to 3-0 on the young season. What a knockout drag out win for Grinnell. Alrighty, so that wraps it up. That is your top five moments, technically six, of the 2019 GHS season presented by the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network. What a season it was. What a year it was. A lot of firsts for us at the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network. Uh, you know, we, we got to do a lot of things that we love doing. Baseball and softball, it was so fun. Even though softball didn't have a moment in the top six or top five, 
it was so fun to broadcast the softball season. I cannot wait for this year. We're going to try to fit more softball games on the schedule uh, because we just like going over there. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we really look forward to the upcoming season. Uh, we got to go back to the well. The girls did, uh, which I forgot to mention earlier, the girls' basketball team going back to Wells Fargo Arena. Despite losing in the first round, it's still a great experience. We got to broadcast it on the floor. Uh, you know, what a fun experience. What a fun year it was. Grinnell Sports is on the rise, and uh, I'm excited for 2020. I think 2020 holds a lot of playoff aspirations, including uh, basketball for both boys and girls, wrestling, uh, you know, and I do I dare say football. I truly believe football can get back to the dome this year. Uh, I'm that excited about the next season. So we'll take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back for your upcoming events of the next week. And uh, we'll be back right after this commercial break. Hey there, I'm Joey Polyi, third generation owner of Polyi's in Grinnell. Since 1957, we've been serving you the flavors you savor. Dine in, carry out, or pick up our frozen pizzas for a night in. Our promise to you... Everything is made from scratch, and we only use the freshest ingredients, guaranteed. Plus, get your kids signed up for our Pax Pals program to get free pizza and shirts. Visit polyeyesgrinnellia.com or ask your server how to sign up. See you soon at Polyeyes Pizza Grinnell on 5th Ave between Main and Broad Street. When I took over this farm from my dad, I knew our future success required making major changes in our operations. That meant adding acreage more and bigger equipment, investing in powerful technology, hiring employees. We even started a seed business. Fortunately, working together with Grinnell Mutual and my local mutual insurance company, my agent was able to cover everything, giving us more trust in tomorrow. Alrighty, so we're back for a, another week of sports. School has officially started, started last week on a Thursday. Um, I'm still off till next Monday, so you know I've just kind of been sitting around home. That's why I'm the one recording the episode this weekend. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on. So last night, Monday night, uh, I don't believe, because this is coming out on a Tuesday or whatnot, uh, the ninth grade boys basketball team went to Pella Christian along with the JV because they only have one gym technically. They couldn't fit it all in one night. So those, the ninth grade and JV went to Pella Christian last night. Tonight, as of the day that I'm recording this podcast, there is a or the girls basketball JV game is canceled. I see. So tonight it's just girls varsity and boys varsity against Pella Christian in what should be a phenomenal matchup. Pella Christian on the girls side is always a tough matchup, and Pella Christian on the boys side, uh, you know, Grinnell's got to try to regain some rhythm. You know, getting back going. Uh, you know, three losses in a row, not ideal. Tonight's a big night. You're going to see some different names in the starting lineup because of a few shakeups after the center point Urbana game. Uh, so we'll see how that all shakes out. It should be a really fun night uh, tonight as Grinnell goes to Pella Christian on the boys and girls side. Tuesday, or on Wednesday, excuse me, there's nothing going on. On Thursday, there is a swimming meet, boys varsity swimming meet at Grinnell College versus Boone. So if you haven't been able to go watch the swimming team this year, go out and support them. That starts at 530 there's uh, obviously musical rehearsal. That's just on here. The Adams Family coming out in March. Uh, I'm really excited to see that as a former uh, actor at the Grinnell High School. I know they're working hard on that along with speech and whatnot. So uh, make sure to go out and support support your Grinnell Fine Arts, whether that be theater, choir, or band. Uh, and then also on Thursday night, there is a uh, wrestling meet for both JV and varsity at Indianola High School. That is at 6.30. On Friday, the state debate team, or the Grinnell debate team, is headed for a state deb debate at DMAC. And then there's a big slate of basketball at Indianola High School. Uh, girls JV, boys JV, boys ninth grade, girls varsity, and boys varsity all headed to Indianola to take on the Indians. And we know how good the boys or the girls side of Indianola versus Grinnell is. A heated rivalry, in my opinion. Have had great games the past couple of years. I'm excited for that game. The boys varsity wrestling team also goes to North Polk High School to take on mot multiple schools. On Saturday, there is the there's more state debate at DMAC. There is SEBA Honor Band auditions at Fairfield High School, so I know some people go into that. Good luck to all those students. you got to make a far drive, but I guarantee it's worth it. There's a wrestling JV invitational event at North Mahaska High School versus multiple schools, 
and then at that's at 10 a.m. And then at 12 p.m. there is a swimming boys varsity invitational at Des Moines Hoover versus multiple schools. Um, so we're really excited. Uh, there's a there's a big week, big week of sports ahead, and uh, you know we're getting back in the groove. Christmas has happened, New Year's has happened, 2020 fresh start. Uh, the boys are looking, Grinnell boys basketball team looking for their first win of the decade. So is the girls basketball team. Could it happen tonight against Pella Christian? Who knows? But uh, overall, what a 2019 it was. We look ahead, set our sights to 2020. We're excited for the year upcoming here at the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network. We have a lot of big plans, uh, you know, upcoming. Hopefully we can get more guests in. We can, uh, you know, we can make it back to Wells Fargo, not only at the state tournament, but also when Grinnell plays Mount Vernon. We want to try to get there and broadcast at Wells Fargo so we can uh, have all the video for the public and whatnot. If you can't make it out to the game, uh, we're excited for baseball, softball, everything. We're even doing wrestling here in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned to that. There's a lot coming on the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network, and uh, my dad and I and Craig, uh, we're, we're all excited for what's to come. So once again... That'll wrap up this week, episode 33. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network. I'm Blake Walker, and have a great sports week, and go Tigers. Now, taken away by Meredith McKnight. Good luck for Cunningham. He's been quite knocked down. Hayden goes to the corner. Sarah Gosling tries a three-pointer and knocks it down. Holly Eyes three-pointer. Timeout, Dell Center Drive. This production is a copyright of the Tiger Sports Live Stream Network of this podcast or material from it is prohibited without the permission of the Tiger Sports Livestream Network.